Today's lesson is about comparing and ordering fractions, decimals, and percents. In some previous lessons, we learned how to convert fractions, decimals, and percents to change one to another form. And we also learned how to show representations for fractions, decimals, and percents. So today we're going to use what we already know to help put them in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. Let's get started. Uh, first thing I want to go over with you is the ways that we are going to put them in order. Uh, there are two different methods that I'm going to show you today that you can use to put fractions, decimals, and percents in order. Uh, one you'll probably use more often than the other, but they're, they're both available, and you can choose to use whichever one you want uh, when you go to do your math problems for homework and on the quiz. Um, so we're either going to use a number line method, or we're going to line up our decimals or percents or fractions uh, and compare them based on their values once they're all in the same form. Uh, what you have to do for either method, though, is write all of your numbers in the same form. So if I give you a handful of fractions, decimals, and percents, I'm going to recommend that you make them all either into decimal form or percent form. You can make them fractions and compare all of the fractions, but in order to do that, you would need to make common denominators for all of them, which could end up being quite a bit of work. Uh, last thing, when you write your final answers, you have to write the numbers in their original form. So you don't want to leave them all as decimals or percents when you write your answer, put them back the way they originally were. So let's look at a, a couple examples. First one, uh, I have some numbers here that I want you to put in order from least to greatest. So there's 8 tenths, 9 fifteenths, 85 hundredths, 73 hundredths, and 5 eighths. Uh, so let's change them all into decimals first. 8 tenths is already a decimal, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. 9 fifteenths is a fraction, and if you remember, the way you change a fraction into a decimal is by dividing. Uh, you take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. That's what a fraction is. A fraction is a division problem. That fraction bar is a division sign, so you can always divide the numerator by the denominator if you're asked to change a fraction into something new. So I'm going to do that. I'll do the division, and as I do my dividing, I'll find out that the answer to 9 fifteenths is 0 and 6 tenths, or 0.6. 85 hundredths is a percent, and remember the percent means out of 100. So you can write 85 percent as 85 out of 100 or 85 hundredths. The other thing you could do is put your decimal point at the end of the number, if it's a whole number, and move it over two spaces to the left, and you'll get the same answer as I did when I said 85 out of 100. It's 85 hundredths. 73 hundredths is already in decimal form, so I'll leave that the way it is. And 5 eighths, I'm going to divide just like I did with 9 fifteenths. And 5 divided by 8 is equal to 625 thousandths. So now let's put those numbers on a number line. I'm going to use each of these dots for, to represent one of the numbers. So 8 tenths I'll put on first. 8 tenths goes where 8 tenths is on the number line. Pretty easy. 6 tenths goes where 6 tenths is on the number line. Pretty easy. The third one, though, 85 hundredths, uh, you have to look at the tenths value, the tenths place, to figure out about where it's going to be. It's going to be just past the 8 tenths mark. And the 5 tells you it's going to be halfway between 8 tenths and 9 tenths. So 85 hundredths or 85% would go there. 73 hundredths is going to go right after the 7 tenths mark, but not quite halfway. And 625 thousandths will be in the uh, just after 6 tenths, uh, but it's not going to be quite all the way to 6 or halfway between 6 tenths and 7 tenths, it's actually going to be a quarter of the way from 6 tenths to 7 tenths. So right about right there. Maybe about there. So we have all of our numbers on the number line. We actually just put them in order when we put them on the number line, because you can read from left to right or right to left, depending on if you're doing least to greatest or greatest to least. So let's do that now. So we have all of our numbers on the number line. In order from least to greatest, the first dot or the first uh, mark represented 6 tenths, which is 9 fifteenths. The second dot represented uh, 5 eighths or 625 thousandths. The third dot was 73 hundredths. The fourth dot was 8 tenths, which is equal to 80 percent or 8 tenths here. And 85 percent or 85 hundredths was the farthest dot to the right. So if I'm putting them order from least to greatest, I'm just reading them off from left to right, basically. So let's look at a second example. Uh, I'm going to convert all of these into decimals also. Uh, while I do that, you do that on a piece of paper, so hit pause. And then when you finish, you can hit play again to see if your numbers match mine. And this is what I came up with. 
So what you'll notice is that one of our numbers is a repeating decimal this time, which is going to be important to recognize when you put them in order. So the second method we're going to use is we're going to line up all of these decimals so they're uh, in a vertical list, and the points are going to line up, the tenths places are going to line up, the hundredths places will line up, so every place value will line up. So it's going to look something like this. Uh, we're going to take them and line them up just like that. What you'll notice is that I added some numbers to this. Uh, the numbers that do not repeat, so basically all of them except for the first one, I added zeros in so that all of the numbers ended in the thousands place. You're going to need those zeros to compare numbers sometimes. So I added those in. Uh, what you'll notice is I also added a 4 up here. Think about why I would have added a 4 instead of a 0 in that space. The answer is because 5 11 is a repeating decimal. So the number that would come after 5 would be another 4. It would not be a 0. So if I were to write this number out several spaces, it would be 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, and it would continue that way. So if I'm filling in empty spaces, I can't fill zeros in. I have to fill in the number that would come next. So now that I have those lined up, I'm going to take this uh, shield that I have here. I'm going to call this my little red shield. And I'm going to compare the numbers starting from left to right. And as I compare them, I'm going to keep track of which ones are the smallest and which ones are the largest and which ones go in which order. So if I start uh, and I look at the ones place, I can't tell anything based on that ones place. They all look the same to me right now. If I move over one more space, what I'll notice is that some of the numbers are different. If I'm putting them in order from least to greatest, I'm going to look for the smallest numbers first. So this number right here is the smallest because it has the smallest tens value. So I'm going to write a 1 right here. So that's going to go first when I put them in order. The next number I can't tell yet because it's uh, either one of these two numbers, but they both have a 4 in the tens place. So I need to move over one more space and see what comes next. Okay. If I'm comparing the two numbers that had a 4 in the tenths place, they both also have a 5 in the hundredths place, so I still can't tell which one's the next one in the list. So I've got to move over one more space to the thousandths place. And now I can tell. The one that has a 4 in the thousandths place is going to go second, and the one that has an 8 in the thousandths place is going to go third. Now that's a weird looking 3. I'm trying to write with a mouse right now. I apologize. And now the last two numbers both have 7s in the, in the tenths place, so I'm going to go back here to the tens place and move over one space. And I can tell right now which one is the smallest of the two. The one that has the zero in the hundredths place is the smallest out of the seven tenths numbers. And this one is the next one. So that's going to go last. So I have my numbers in order. Now I just have to write them in order in their original form. So now that I have them in order, Eight hundredths went first, five elevenths went second, and then four hundred and fifty eight thousandths, seventy percent, and then three fourths. So one thing that you have to do that's important is you have to keep track of which decimals which decimals match up with which numbers in original form. So I remember that this one was five elevenths, and I remember that this one was eight hundredths, uh, this one was seven tenths and three fourths. But you need to do that or else you're not going to be able to write them in the right order. Okay? So, one more practice problem. This one I want you to do on your own. Hit pause, change all of your numbers to either percents or decimals, whichever you prefer, and then use either a number line method or line them up vertically like in the second example to put them in order from least to greatest. When you're done, you can check your answer to see how you did. Okay, here's the answer to the problem in decimal form. Uh, seven tenths is seven tenths. Uh, 7 repeating, 7 tenths repeating is 7 tenths repeating. 75% would be 0 0.75 or 75 hundredths. And this one stays in decimal form, 77 hundredths. So now from least to greatest, we can line them up. The first number has a 7 with a couple of zeros after the decimal point. You can see the repeating number has a couple of 7s when I added in the extra numbers. I had to add a 0 here and a 0 here. So they all go out to the thousandths place. And now when I put them in order, if you look, they all have a 7 in the tenths place. But in the hundredths place, uh, the 0 is the smallest, and then the 5 is the second smallest. So I put 7 tenths first, 75% second. And then if I go back to the two that have 7s in the hundredths place, the thousandths value, this is why I had to add a thousandths, because this one, the second and fourth ones would look the same otherwise. 
There's a 7 here and a 0 here, which means 77 hundredths goes 3rd. And the 0.7 tenths repeating goes 4th. Hope this lesson was helpful. Uh, you can rewatch, use for homework, use for quizzes, use for preparing things. Uh, and I'll see you next time.